And let us pray. O gracious God, we have heard the call of the prophets. We have heard your call in the words of your holy gospel. We have heard Jesus call us to follow. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will give us the strength to follow faithfully, to be your people in this place and time, and to not be afraid, to use every moment that we have to glorify you in some way. In the meditations of our hearts and the words of our lips, always be pleasing and acceptable to you, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. <laughs> Reverend Dr. Luke Martin Luther King Jr. wrote in the final chapter of his book, the book that I pick up this time of year, dates back to 1958. It's Dr. King's book titled Stride Toward Freedom. It's probably one of the best books that he ever wrote. And he writes about the ongoing struggle, those early parts of the civil rights movement that he was participating in back in 1958. And I want to read this quote to you and ask you to listen to it carefully. He writes, a solution of the present crisis will not take place unless men and women work for it. He's talking about racial justice, economic justice in the time. He goes on and says, human progress is neither automatic or inevitable. Even a superficial look at history reveals that no social advance rolls on the wheels of inevitability. Every step toward the goal of justice requires sacrifice, suffering, and struggle. The tireless exertions and passionate concern of dedicated individuals. Without persistent effort, time itself becomes an ally of the insurgent and primitive forces of irrational emotionalism and social destruction. And I underline this for you. This is no time for apathy or complacency. This is a time for vigorous and positive action. So the words of Dr. King. Dr. King's words, this is a time for vigorous and positive action. His words were first read by many back in 1958 when the book was published. But these words are timeless. While Dr. King's words were written and pertain to that time in the Civil Rights Movement, they echo words that must be listened to by all of us. Especially for those words where he says, this is a time for vigorous and positive action. Vigorous and positive action. Well, these first words appeared in Dr. King's book, 1958. If you pick up his letter from Birmingham jail, you'll find almost the same words. Dr. King wrote this letter while he was jailed in, in Alabama. He was jailed because of the protest and his speaking out for racial justice. And he wrote a letter to white clergy in the area. The white clergy were trying to pressure Dr. King to back off, to not be so vocal, so vigorous in his efforts to bring racial justice to the South. And so he spent time while in jail those days writing a letter to his fellow clergy. And so he goes back to what he had written back in 1958 and he puts them into this letter. It's a long letter. But here again, these important words reappear. And I say they're important because if Dr. King was going to take them from one source and put them into a new source, they must have been really important words for him and also written on his heart. And so he says, again, and I quote, human progress never rolls on the wheels of inevitability. It comes through the tireless efforts of men and women willing to be co-workers with God. Co-workers with God. And without this hard work, time itself becomes the ally of the forces of stagnation. We must use time creatively in the knowledge that the time is always ripe to 
to do right. Those are the words of Dr. King, and I underline, the time is always right to do right. The prophet Isaiah speaks to us this morning, as now read to us, as one whose cause and strength is with the Lord. Is your cause and strength with the Lord this morning? Is your cause and strength with the Lord this morning? Yeah. Well, somewhat, yeah. I guess we need a little bit of strength. We need a little bit of vigorous activity to get us going every day. But we come to church hoping that we'll get some kind of strength, some kind of spiritual nourishment that will allow us to be vigorous. Is your cause and your strength with the Lord? If it's not with the Lord, then where is your cause? What is your cause and where is your strength coming from if it's not with the Lord? Dr. King's cause was with the Lord. And Dr. King's strength. And it was like all of us, sometimes we had more than day, one day than another, but his strength was also clearly with the Lord. The prophet Isaiah is saying to the people of the world in his time, that the time is right. The time is right to do right. The prophet is saying it's time to glorify God, people of Israel. It's time to be the light unto the world. No longer is the message that God has, the saving message that God has, says the prophet, just for you, people of Israel. The message is now you, people of Israel, have a message for the world. You need to take it beyond your boundaries, beyond those comfort zones, beyond those walls that you built yourself around you. You need to be the light unto the world to bring God's message of salvation so that it may reach to the ends of the earth. Your cause has to be with the Lord, and so is your strength. It has to be with the Lord if you're going to take on such a task. Now listen to the voice of John the Baptist when he saw Jesus coming. He said, here is the Lamb of God who make, takes away the sin of the world. Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John the Baptist, even though he's not called John the Baptist in the Gospel, John had taken on the task. His strength and his cause was with the Lord. And he made an announcement to those that were around him, his own followers, that God was continuing to unfold God's redeeming plan. And there it is, walking right by us. Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John the Baptist announcing for all to hear that God's redeeming power was revealed to them in the life of Jesus. John the Baptist, like Dr. King, goes back to these same words. Dr. King underlines important words for us to hear that he really truly believed at his time that we needed to hear back in 58 and back in 63 and, and again today as we recite them and remember them. And John the Baptist draws back on important words just the day before. He says, here's the Lamb of God and his own followers. Get up. I want to know, what does this Lamb of God have to say? And so they get behind Jesus. And Jesus notices and feels that the disciples are following him. Not his own disciples, the disciples of John the Baptist. And he turns around and he says, what are you looking for? I like to think of Jesus saying, what's your cause? Where do you get your strength? Who are you? What's your story? What are you looking for? And of course, the disciples said, disciples of John, where are you staying? They were curious. They wanted to hear more from this Jesus, this Lamb of God. And so they went along with him and spent the day with him, listening carefully. As I imagine Jesus unfolding God's plan to transform and change the world, to bring it back into relationship with God fully, to fix it, to fix the broken parts, to bring healing and hope into the world. Jesus telling the full story as Jesus understood it. And from there, 
hearts were changed. One disciple reaches out to his brother and, and brings Simon into relationship with Jesus through Andrew, his brother. And there Jesus meets Simon and gives him a new name. Proof of transformation. Simon takes on a new name, Cephas, becomes the rock, and carries on. The prophet Isaiah speaks to the people of God, declaring that the time is right to do right by God. The time is right. Always. John the Baptist declares to his disciples, here is the Lamb of God. Again, John the Baptist is saying, the time is right to do right by God. The time is right to be the light unto the nations, to use time creatively for vigorous and positive action, as Dr. King says. Friends in Christ, I'm so grateful. I'm grateful for the vigorous and positive action that flows into and out of this church. It's been a busy last three weeks. We had a great, wonderful, positive, and vigorous action when we gathered here for a meal together. When our Ghanaian brothers and sisters opened up their hearts to us through the preparation of food, we had a wonderful smorgasbord of great things to eat. And then the following Sunday, we had our, our charged conference. A vigorous, I pray, positive action that reveals the work of the church moving forward. We also had, last Sunday, a vigorous and positive action we gathered here with our bishop to consecrate the renovations that have been going on. I'm so grateful for the vigorous and positive action that flows into and out of this church. And I know that it has not been easy by any measurement. It has not been easy. Members and friends of this church have sacrificed, have suffered, and struggled to get where we are today. Let us not take it for granted. Every act, every step, every dollar, every effort and prayer that has gone in to get us to this place has been orientated towards vigorous and positive action. As we continue in our life together, I know that God has much for us to do and for much for us to anticipate and much for us to plan. You see, being a co-worker of God, as Dr. King invites us to do and to be, is hard work. There's no getting around it. If you want to get in on what God is doing, we have to work hard. I wish I could say, oh, it's easy. We can pretend that it's easy, can't we? We can treat it as it's easy, but we'll be misguided. If you want to be part of the redeeming project of Jesus Christ, to do the work of God, you need to be prepared to work hard. And all that should do. As a matter of fact, most of it happens outside of the walls of the church. We just gather here to catch our breath, to be fed, to plan, to do some hard work. But most of our time is spent outside of this building. And it's there that we really encounter the hard, hard work that's required of a Christian. The hard work. In the words of Dr. King, and again, these, these these words that Dr. King has given to us through his writings, sermons, are such a gift. He reminds us that, that, that time is such a, a wonderful, wonderful thing, it's such a gift, and it's available to all of us. And we all have to choose how we're going to employ the time that God gives us. And this is where the hard work comes in because you know, God gives us plenty of time, 24 hours a day, and, and there's much to do in those 24 hours. We, we need to find time to rest and, and to, to uh, recreate and, and, and to pray and to all those things that we have to do. But God also gives us the ability to choose how we're going to spend our time. We can choose to be fully active, or we can choose to do nothing. And, and sometimes it's good to do nothing. But nothing is not a lifestyle. To do nothing in the midst of being a Christian is not a lifestyle. 
We need to spend our time carefully and prayerfully. We need to be willing to spend a portion of our time doing the hard work that's required of us if we're truly followers of the Lamb. And so, if I do choose to do nothing, time will continue to unfold. But there'll be no contribution from me. Well, what fills that time? If I choose not to do the work of God at a particular time, what can fill that gap? My grandmother and maybe some of your elders, or maybe you said these same words, that the devil's hands, excuse me, <laughs> idle hands are what? The yes. devil's hands. Our hands are meant to be the hands of Christ. The words of Dr. Kings are so useful. And if I choose to do nothing with these hands and with this heart, with this mind and these feet, time will continue to unfold and it's, yes, there'll be no contribution from me. However, as a Christian, as a Christian, I, uh, choosing not to be part of God's work is really is not an option. If I'm going to claim the name of Christian, Doing nothing in the name of God, doing nothing to glorify God, is truly not an option. It does not fit into the job description of the Christian. To do nothing to glorify, to serve God every day. Something. The cause of Christ is the ongoing struggle and sacrifice of doing the kingdom work of God here on earth. Something. It's available to us every single day to do to glorify God. And I wish I could say that this something gets easier with time. Matter of fact, I think it gets harder and harder to be a faithful follower of Jesus. We might learn new skills and methods in using our time. There are lots of books on how to be a good disciple and how to strengthen your disciples in task. There are lots of gadgets, all kinds of things we can put on a computer and on our iPhones or our smartphones to, to help us. But the true answer to the question of how to be a disciple is how to do the hard work is to make oneself available in time. To say, I am ready, O oh Lord, for rigorous and positive work that you want to give to me to be your servant in this place and time. The cause of Christ demands much. And it demands much because the time is always right to do right. The time is always right to glorify God. Friends, the work of God, the justice work, the compassion work, the peace work, the forgiving work, the love work, the healing work, it's all hard. But the time is right right now for us to be involved in this work every day. And to come to church and to be able to celebrate in heart and mind and with others how the week passed has gone by and how you look forward to the next week that where you're going to be able to do something in some small way to let another person know that they too are a child of God and the time is right for them to do right too. This work that we're talking about in the life of the church does not happen without God's people choosing to say yes. Yes to the cause. Dr. King said that it's just not going to happen because we want it to happen. Racial justice, economic justice, peace in the world isn't just going to happen because we think it's a good idea. We want it to happen and therefore it will happen. Peace and justice in the world. A church that is vibrant in the community is going to happen because the people decide it's going to happen. And are going to invest their time and their gifts and their talents in the project of salvation in this tiny little place and say, yes, I'm in for this hard work. I know it's going to be hard. I'm not going to fool myself. And I know it can be positive. And I know it can be vigorous. And I know it can change. The world. Patricia Stewart, who prepares the PowerPoints, had some beautiful images up there. Martin Luther, 
Gandhi, Dr. King, others, single individuals who out of their own faith had changed the world. Some notion, some spirit-led thought came to them at one moment in their lives and it set a spark into a flame and a flame into a fire that consumed the world. Those three individuals, Mother Teresa as well, single individuals who decided that they were going to do the hard work to bring positive and vigorous action into the world to glorify God. I don't know about you, but when I do see the outcomes of those who have struggled and suffered and taken on the task of kingdom building work, I'm changed. When I, no matter what the size, a small task by one person or the collective work of a, a body of Christ, a church or organization, when I see those hearts and minds come together and make change in the world, I too am changed. I pray for, and I hope that you will continue to pray for also as our brothers and sisters in Newtown who carry out the Sandy Hook promise work. They are truly inspired, not by grief and sorrow, and sorrow, but by hope. They're going into the world in amazing ways, trying to make their contribution to the effort to end gun violence and to strengthen families, and to bring attention to the, the needs that we have in our communities for a strong and vigorous mental health system. These 26 individuals all suffer great, great sorrow and pain individually, and some of them collectively have made a decision that they're going to do that hard work. They're going to be those people who are going to answer the call and to serve a call. We have been those people ever since we said yes to Jesus. And while we have not suffered the pain that our brothers and sisters in Newtown have, we share the same cause and call to make the world a better place and to respond to God's call, which I believe is a call of invitation as well as truth. I need you. I need you to join me, I hear God say, through the words of the prophet, to be the servant people, to not be afraid to go into the world to make a difference. When you leave this morning, I want you to remember the words of Dr. King. The time is right to do right. It's always right to do right. And how do you do right in the sight of God is your choice. I have no prescription I can share ideas and thoughts. But the time is right to do right. And it will come to you, to your mind, to your heart, that that particular moment in time is your particular moment in time for that day to do right. And you'll have a choice. Will I do it or will I wait? Maybe somebody else will do it. I know when you step up and you make a decision to join that cause, that particular moment, where you feel that the time is right to do right, and you do it, that you will feel the presence of God. You will feel that you have made some contribution to the kingdom building work that God is calling us to do. You will feel that you have made a difference in a particular person's life, known to you or unknown. It's making that connection to the, the wholeness that God so longs for God's people in all of creation. I pray that you will join me and we'll make that choice. And I pray that you will pray for me that I, I will continue and try to make more choices for the cause of Christ. We need each, each other. We need one another. The work is too hard. For us to go without prayerful and thoughtful consideration of one another. We've taken on a lot. And there's a lot that is waiting for us to take on. Oh no, I'm not calling for exhaustion. I'm calling for a positive and vigorous action in the name of Christ. Sometimes we might feel exhausted or tired. 
That's a call for Sabbath, to take rest. But we need to live with the spirit that we are going to accept the challenges that God brings towards us to be that church in this place in this time, to be vigorous, to be positive for the cause of Christ. It's our choice. I'm calling for you to join together with me to be the place that God has truly called us to be. A wonderful place. A place where the thirsty can come and get drink. The hungry can come and be fed. Those that need clothes may be clothed. Those who are looking for forgiveness can feel it. Those who want to meet Jesus will find him. Amen. Amen.